class. In this video, we're going to be looking at specialization, division of labor, and exchange. And the things that we're going to be looking at is to say, what is the difference between production and productivity? How can productivity be increased? What is specialization? And what is division of labor? All right. So, uh, first of all, production versus productivity. Uh, production is how many units you produce. Productivity is your production per unit of resource. So one thing that you could think about is this idea of gross value added per worker hour is one way of expressing productivity. I think a, a good way of thinking about productivity is it's, it's your output, which is production, divided by your inputs. So how many, how many units can you produce per worker would be, would be a good way of looking at that. Uh, if you look at GDA per worker hour, that is your output divided by your, your, your workers divided by the number of hours they're working. So what that gives you is a, um, is an idea for not only how many per worker, but the, like each hour that a worker is working, how much are, are they producing. Uh, okay, so how can you increase productivity? It's essentially by doing more with less. So you can produce more using the same resources by eliminating waste. You can produce the same amount, but by using fewer resources. So this would be called optimizing production. Or you can produce, or you can produce more of the same in less time. So for example, by, by training your workers or improving your, your technology. Most of the time when you see this, you want to think about improving labor productivity by increasing the amount of capital that we give the labor to use. So more efficient machines makes labor more productive. And there are any number of ways that you can think about this. You know, think about any task which, which you would do, and, and you know, if you had a typewriter, how long would it take you to, to write up a, a, an assignment? And then you say, well, I'm gonna give you a much better machine. I'm gonna give you a computer to do that. A computer saves time because you can go back and edit and change things around, all the things that, that a typewriter couldn't do. Um, the, it increases your productivity, your, the amount that you can do in, in a given amount of time. And then that's the idea between production, the output, and productivity, output per, per unit of, of, of input. Uh, okay, I'm gonna put up some links to these different videos. I think these are cool videos about productivity. This one here, especially the urban farmer, uh, this guy, he gets a machine, and it can do all the planting for him, and it makes him incredibly, you know, much more productive than he ever was before, and he, he goes on to talk about that, and he has some really good examples of how, exactly how much more productive he is. And this is just a, a quick one about, um, these guys were really good at block painting, and they seem to be very skilled at it, and they've done it, <laughs> looks like, many times before, and so therefore, you get the impression that they're just very productive. Okay, specialization and division of labor refer to the idea of breaking up large jobs into smaller tasks. Uh, doing this allows the jobs to be done faster and improves productivity. So we would have talked about in lesson, why is this the case? Uh, well, think about, think about if you were, I don't know, uh, doing a job, you know, if you're working in a restaurant, if you were the only one who was doing everything, if you were doing the, 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 the cooking, the serving, the washing up, and running around, and if everybody were doing everything, if three people were in a restaurant and, and, and each one doing that, it'd be getting in each other's way, you wouldn't be very, you wouldn't be getting good at any tasks, you would be, you know, constantly like having to pick up tools, like you know, pick up a spatula with, with an egg, um, then you know, like pick up an order pad for taking somebody's order, uh, like lots of inefficiency there. Whereas if you specialize and each person does one task and only that task, then it allows you to get good at it. You don't have to change tools around. You don't have to, um, you, you don't get into each other's way. It, it, the idea is like, you know, teamwork makes the dream work kind of thing, right? So like each, each person specializing in that task gets really good at it. So therefore, it, it, it makes each person more productive. Um, specialization requires, this is sort of a bit of an aside, but it does require money as a unit of exchange. If workers are specialized, they need to have money in order to uh, avoid a, a barter system. So specialized work only, it only works if I'm going to specialize in one thing, which is teaching economics. Um, I need to have a system for money because if that's my specialization, uh, you know, I, I, I go home and I need food, and I haven't bothered to grow it because I'm specializing in one thing, which is teaching economics. So I need to make sure that I find somebody who's willing to pay me in order that I can go to somebody who, who, who does specialize in, in, in food, and I say, here's the money that I've earned for my specialized task. Can you please accept this money for your specialized task because I'd like to eat food and 
you know, maybe that farmer doesn't want to learn economics, but somebody presumably wants to learn economics enough that they're willing to pay me, and so I will then pay the farmer, the, the, the farmer for the food, um, who, and then that, that farmer can, can do what they'd like to with their money. But, but in order to be, to be specialized, you have to have this, this, this money system, or else you'd have to be waiting for this. You have to be waiting for the circumstance where the farmer wants to learn economics, and then have to trade with each other, which, um, which, which, which wouldn't work very well. Um, a couple of other examples here. Let's see. These are some examples of uh, the the early uh, Ford factory, which was the first one to do specialization on a production line, which is quite interesting. This one is a is a factory producing iPads, which is very obvious that people are very specialized because they're doing one task over and over, putting these, these iPads together. And this one, oh yeah, this is a very unspecialized company. This is this is Morgan Cars, and it shows them how they produce this niche market product, this Morgan Car, which where, to be fair, they are quite specialized. They are, they're, they're very good at what they do, but they haven't put through a production line. Um, th th it's much more of a job production process with, with Morgan, and it, it works for them because they sell really expensive cars. But if you want to produce cheap cars, you need to have people um, specialize and, and break down that production. If you want to produce cheap iPads, then you need to, you need to make sure you've got a big factory where everybody is specialized in one, one part of the production process. The reason I interject Adam Smith here now is because uh, he's, he's often called the father of economics, and he was the first one to come up with the idea of specialization and the division of labor. And he described it in his, in his 1776 book, The Wealth of Nations. And the way that he described it is apparently big industry in Scotland in the 1770s was pin making or nail making. And so his example was that you know, if, if you get people who are making nails or pins, and you get each one of them to like you know produce this um, this this good. You know the idea that like you know making a nail requires 18 tasks, and so one worker doing all 18 tasks might make 20 pins or nails a day, right? Because you've got to like sharpen it, you got to straighten the wire, you got to put the little head on it, you got to do all these different things. And like if you're doing it all yourself, you're, you're just messing around so much, you're, you're wasting lots of time. Whereas so therefore 20 workers could produce 20 times 20, which would be 400 times pins. But again, specialization it means that 20 workers are able to specialize in doing that one thing. They get really good at it. They get all the tools right for it. And so therefore, um, one worker can now make 5,000 pins. So it's 20 pins per worker versus 5,000 pins per worker. Obviously, it's much more productive. Of course, this is a way of measuring productivity. It's the amount of, it's the amount of output per worker. And so Adam Smith was, was one to recognize that this division of labor makes the economy more productive. And um, it's a nice little side to think that the first person who ever really thought about economics was the one who came up with uh, this idea of specialization, which is why we look at it in the earlier part of this course. Uh, this is a cool video because it's, it's a quick summary of the chapter of Adam Smith's Wealth of Nations. And this, th this woman talks about the, the different types of uh, like the things that go into it and why it is that that, uh, that the workers save time by specializing by, by you know having having specialist tools having specialist skills not having to, to pick up the the, uh, the, 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 the the tools between different tasks things like that so I'll put the link up to that and also you can think about specialization between economies as well so it's not even just to, to the extent that workers specialize in things but you could say that the different nations, different economies actually specialize as well. So you know, what does the UK specialize in? The UK specializes in, in, in services, you could say. You could say financial services is one thing that the UK is very good at, and so therefore we export that thing which we're very good at, and we find another country to specialize in those things which we're not so good at. You know, for example, on maybe like growing oranges or something like that. Uh, and and if, if we think about it like that, it's, it's a bit of a, a pretext to the kind of lessons that we're going to be doing later on on trade, whereas why is it that countries trade with each other? Well, because trade allows countries to specialize in those things which they're good at, and therefore um, become richer, I suppose, um, to, to use the, the idea of the, the wealth of nations um, as a way of gaining from trade. Uh, the last thing that we would have looked at a lesson, and the last thing that we would have looked at here, is we had a bunch of productivity articles that I that had seen from The Economist. Um, some of them better than others, but some things that though, I thought were really interesting, I'll give you some close-ups on this, is that this one was a, an article about
construction productivity in the UK, and you can see that it basically goes from 1947, actually I think this is the United States, sorry. So it goes from 1947 until today, and it shows constant prices. It shows that agriculture has, has increased productivity by, well, it's gone from 100 to 1,600, so basically a 16 times increase in productivity, whereas construction has actually not really increased very much at all. And this is another example of this in terms of productivity um, for, for different types of sectors. Um, so manufacturing, the total economy, and construction. And the reason why this was happening was pretty much the, the, the summary of those articles was that in the construction industry, they, they still do things very much the same way that they always used to do back in the 1940s. Is that, you know, that they're still using you know, hammers and saws and things like that. Um, whereas in manufacturing and, and agriculture especially, they've got like all sorts of great new combine harvesters and things which now mean that one person can do the work of like a 16 um, if, if you do a comparison. Another thing that was interesting about the article is they mentioned that, that because the construction industry is very cyclical in terms of its profit levels, in terms of the, the way that it relies on the economic cycle, is that they don't often invest in capital equipment and machinery, which means that the workers are not as productive as they could be, and also the fact that there are so many small firms. Each firm does not have the resources to be able to invest in those sorts of capital resources, and so therefore construction firms tend to be less productive than, than other firms in the economy. I'm going to show you a couple of other things here. Um, this, is, this is something from another one uh, which shows the, the productivity growth in different sectors in the UK. You can see that in transport equipment and admin and support, uh, there's been a lot of, um, th there's been a big increase in productivity, a 60% or a 30% increase in productivity in these sectors. And that I think is primarily due to the fact that those sectors have invested in things like, you know, cool, um, cool new like modes, modes of transit. There was one in construction that we were talking about like laser, laser guided, um, laser guided like workbenches and things.